the age of industrialization. Let us learn about the peculiarities of industrial growth and Swadeshi movement. The peculiarities of industrial growth. When Indian businessmen began setting up industries in the late 19th century, they avoided competing with Manchester goods in the Indian market. Since yarn was not an important part of British imports into India, the early cotton mills in India produced coarse cotton yarn thread rather than fabric. When yarn was imported, it was only of the superior variety. The yarn produced in Indian spinning mills was used by handloom weavers in India or exported to China. By the first decade of 20th century, a series of changes affected the pattern of industrialization as the Swadeshi movement gathered momentum. Nationalists mobilized people to boycott foreign clothes. Industrial groups organized themselves to protect their collective interest, pressurizing the government to increase tariff protection and grant other concession. From 1906, Moreover, the export of Indian yarn to China declined since production from Chinese and Japanese mills flooded the Chinese market. So, industrialists in India began shifting from yarn to cloth production. Cotton piece goods production in India doubled between 1900 and 1912. Yet, till the First World War, Industrial growth was slow. The war created a dramatically new situation, with British mills busy with war production to meet the needs of the army. Manchester imports into India declined. As the war prolonged, Indian factories were called upon to supply war needs. Jute bags, clothes for army uniforms, tents and leather boots, horse and mule saddles, and a host of other items. Over the war years, industrial production boomed. After the war, Manchester could never recapture its old position in the Indian market. Small-scale industries predominate, while factory industries grew steadily after the war Large industries formed only a small segment of the economy, most of them about 67% in 1911 were located in Bengal and Bombay. Handicrafts production actually expanded in the 20th century. This is true even in the case of the handloom sector that we have discussed, while cheap machine made thread wiped out the spinning industry. In the 19th century, the weavers survived despite problems. In the 20th century, handloom cloth production expanded steadily, almost tripling between 1900 and 1940. How did this happen? This was partly because of technological changes. Handicrafts people adopt new technology if that helps them to improve production without excessively pushing up costs. So, by the second decade of the 20th century, we find weavers using looms with a fly shuttle. This increased productivity per worker, speeded up production and reduced labor demands. Certain groups of weavers were in a better position than other to survive the competition with mill industries. Amongst weavers, some produced coarse cloth while others wove finer varieties. The coarser cloth was bought by the poor and its demand fluctuated violently. Weavers and other craftspeople who continued to expand production through the 20th century did not necessarily prosper. They lived hard lives and worked long hours. Market for goods One way in which new consumers are created is through advertisements. As you know, advertisements make products appear desirable and necessary. They tried to shape the demands of people and created new needs. Today, we live in a world 
where advertisements surround us. They appear in newspaper, magazines, hoardings, street walls, television screens. But, but if we look back into history, we find that from the very beginning of the industrial age, advertisements have played a part in expanding the markets for products and in shaping a new consumer culture. By the late 19th century, manufacturers were printing calendars to popularize their products. Unlike newspaper and magazines, calendars were used even by people who could not read. They were hung in tea shops and in poor people's homes, just as much as in offices and middle class apartments. When Indian manufacturer advertised, the nationalist message was clear and loud. If you care for the nation, then buy products that Indians produce. Advertisements became a vehicle for the nationalist message of Swadeshi. Summary Industrial revolution started in spinning in the 18th century. Lancashire cotton mill were set up in London in 1925. Railway engine depot factories were started in England in 1849. First cotton mill in Bombay came up in 1854. Modern equipments and instruments were found in the spinning factory in 1830. New iron industries were set in northeast England. A spinning jenny was found by T. E. Nicholson in 1853. Textile industries, mainly silk, made its position in Surat in India. It became the major silk trading in India. Manchester goods came to India in 1850. Famous steel factories were set up in India by Jamshed G. Tata. The first office of Chamber of Commerce was set up at Madras.